What is up, everybody? It is Armand here again with the Low Fidelity Dreams podcast. Today, we have an interesting topic of success and failure. This is a really heartfelt topic for a lot of artists and really any musician or person in general. But we're going to talk about some of the concepts that I was able to pick up over my years of failing over and over and over until I was able to pretty much find the success I was looking for. So yeah, we'll get right into it. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Alrighty. So this is a crazy topic, but this needs to be said. Rejection is totally normal. Failure is totally normal. Success comes here or there. But success is always subjective. What we really want to talk about today is how we can overcome some of these really odd feelings of not equating up to enough to become the artist that you've always wanted to be or the artist that you look up to. You always compare yourself thinking, oh, if my song doesn't or if my track doesn't sound like X, Y, and Z, then it's not good enough. If I don't sell out stadiums, sell a bunch of tickets, have people come and watch me play live, have millions of Spotify listeners, if that doesn't happen, then I'm not successful. That is the kind of mentality that a lot of artists, really any person has growing up in this whole culture, everyone's hustling, everyone's trying to get to the top, but what they don't realize is the guys that are at the top spent the decades before, working on their skill, crafting things that we could have never imagined, and honed in the abilities that got them where they are at today. So, rejection. Let me tell you a little bit about where my point of view came from on rejection. So, I've been producing for about 10 years now, and honestly, once I hit my 10th year, or a little bit before, about a year before, when I started the whole Dark Lo-Fi glitch wave um, and then Ex Machina, I thought that, you know, I had something worth sharing, which every artist does. I made a whole album. It's my Equinox album. If you actually go to Spotify right now, you can check out my Equinox album that came out. I was so proud of that because it was so different from what I have been producing for the previous nine years. Always producing heavy trap, hip hop, a lot of house music and techno music. It went from that to making lo-fi beats. And because it was such a big shift, I didn't take into account that, well, there's a bunch of other lo-fi artists out there that have been doing it for many years. And so with my mentality at the time, I took that album and I shopped it around to a few labels that I thought would take the music and do something cool with it. And I ended up getting rejected from possibly like 10 plus record labels because it just sounded too different. Either it wasn't refined enough or it was too different and it was challenging the norms of low fidelity music. And I took that in such a bad, bad way. Like I felt so so upset for so long, I say so long, maybe like two months after that period where I was just hurt, and then I had this weird angst inside me against every every label, and I was like, yeah, this ain't it for me. Looking back at it, though, I'm glad that rejection happened, because if I didn't get rejected at the time, Distant Ether would have never been born. The whole new wave of Dark Lo-Fi Glitch wouldn't have been born, because when I, when I actually first started producing the Equinox album, It was never the intention to create a new wave of sound. It was rather just to create some lo-fi beats I can listen to while editing, and I went ahead and did it. The coolest thing, though, was realizing months later that the kind of energy that I received from that rejection was honestly incomparable to anything that I received previously. With that kind of motivation, I was able to take what I knew with production, the sounds that I enjoyed, I was able to push myself further to create a piece and pieces that I could truly be proud of, this time with no strings attached, no labels attached, nobody to go and show my music and seek for approval. 
At the end of the day, I was making the music for me. When I realized this, the game completely changed. Before, I would always measure my happiness in music to all the shows that I've sold or all the tickets that I've sold or all of the views and the listens that I got. All the approval that I was seeking whenever I got it made me feel like I was doing something. What I didn't realize, though, was how empty that was. Once I understood that chasing a happiness that is not tangible at the end of the day is out of my control. So does that mean that my happiness will always be out of control? And so with this mind shift, I was able to actually look at myself and say, okay, what would really make me happy if I didn't have any sort of expectations to prove for anybody, didn't have to seek any sort of approval, what would be my true happiness? And when I finally came down to the bare bones, the idea was if I could produce one track every week, I would be completely happy. And that means from start to finish, mix and master everything. And I literally did that. Now, four albums later, multiple singles and EPs, it's safe to say that that was a wonderful decision on my part because now that we're inching in on the 55th track, almost out for Ex Machina, I can tell you, man, that my sound is substantially different from my Equinox album to my new Midnight Elevators album that's coming out. And I honestly give all that credit to failure and rejection. Because without failure, there is no data. So keep that in mind. Every time you guys fail, think of it as data. It's There is no win or lose in music. It's whether you do or not. And at the end of the day, as long as you're doing, something's going to come out of it that's completely unique and different. But you have to allow failure to actually push you down, kick you a few times, so you know how to defend yourself. And when you finally stand back up, you'll have a different perspective. And when you can truly make the music for yourself, without worrying about what other people think, then you'll truly start to be able to venture into your unique sound that at the end of the day needs nobody's approval but your own. Like I mentioned, success is always subjective. You just need to find what's tangible and then make that your metric of success. Always trying to say that I need to sell out this or I need to be number one in this chart or that chart. My album needs to sell X amount of records. None of that matters. At the end of the day, that won't make you happy. It will never make you happy because you're not in control of those numbers. Rather, you are in control of your output. So you can control if you do produce music or not, if you create or consume. It's totally up to you, but that's more tangible than something that you wish that could happen. And with that, my shift in mentality changed so greatly that I was able to properly produce music for the first time in a decade without any sort of hindrance, any sort of mental barrier that kept me from actually doing what I wanted because I thought it sounded cool. I didn't have to conform to any one label sound anymore. And that's why I was like, well, I'll go ahead and create Disney Ether, a little home for my style of tunes. And it's not like I'm actively looking for people to submit on the label. It's rather just a place where I can cultivate my experiment. And if people enjoy that, then they are more than welcome to join me on that venture. But it's never forced, it's totally organic, and it's fresh. And the craziest thing is, because it's my own thing, and nobody's really attempting it or has attempted it, there's really no competition. So at the end of the day, I'm just creating art for art. And even if there was competition, healthy competition in this genre, that's just so much more exciting because you created that shift in somebody else's perspective that this sound could be something possible in the future. Now, how are you going to get there, though, is the question. You have to release music. End of story. There's no way around it. A lot of people will try to say, oh, I make this, I make that, I've made this album or that album. But when you actually ask them, hey, 
where can I find it and listen to it? They'll respond with, oh, I don't have it uploaded or I don't have this or that. They'll give you an excuse. At the end of the day, if you truly want to find where you stand in music and what your lane is, you need to put out music. You have to be able to be open to critique and understand somebody's perspective. When somebody tells me that one of my tracks are not as good or if it's trash or something, I smile and I enjoy the feedback. And the reason why is because I know my ability to produce music. I know that I can produce music. I know I can mix and master music. So sonically, the song isn't bad. The track isn't terrible. Rather, it's just not the cup of tea of whoever's listening to it. But the craziest thing is you're able to evoke a reaction. And I think that, in my opinion, that is what we should strive for, is just getting a reaction from people. Because, again, it's art. It's emotions. You got to keep it organic. And the only way to do that is to let the ego go, allow your music to fester out in the world, you get critiqued, and then you take that critique with a grain of salt. It's not always perfect critique. Most of the time, what somebody thinks you should do with your track isn't what you should do with your track. Just keep that in mind. But if you can hear their perspective and how they hear the song or the track, you will know how their mind works and how they perceive the sound. You'll see what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy. Just the little quirks of your listeners. Just like when you go and test your mix and master on your car speakers, your headphone speakers, your phone speakers. You want to do the same thing with people. You want to be able to test your music with certain people so you know how it hits. That's the only way you're going to ever gather data. And if you ever want to get better, that's the only way you're going to get better. You can listen to your music over and over and over again, but not until you find your sound, you won't know which direction to head. But once you get to the destination, then you can build your metropolis there. But you got to get there first. And in order to get there, you need direction. And without direction, you're not going to get there anytime soon. There's many things that you can do as far as becoming successful. But again, I will say that success is subjective and don't let outside numbers dictate how you perceive your happiness. Don't allow it to falter your thoughts. Don't allow failure to hold you back. Accept failure and welcome failure. Because if you don't fail, you won't know where to succeed. If you don't mess up enough, you won't know what to do right. At the end of the day, Welcome failure because it is data. And without data, there is no destination. We'd just be floating around aimlessly, not knowing who likes what, what we like, what we can do to further our sound, how we can implement our sound with the current generation's wave. It's all a science, but it's also a game. You just got to play it right. But if you quit before the game's over, you're never going to win. So that's it for me on this subject of success and failure. Keep on failing, guys. Because remember, it's just data. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Low Fidelity Dreams podcast. This was Armand, your host, Ex Machina. Go check out my music on every platform you can think of. Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon. I've got a bunch of YouTube videos with live jams coming out for my new album, Midnight Elevators. Definitely go sub, drop a comment on one of those videos. Show me that you appreciate. Also check out our website, distantether.com for more updates. All right, guys, you have a wonderful day. See you on the next one.